Hello again YouTube, my dog here, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, back up the woods, yeah! Um, what I'm doing um, this weekend is basically two days, two nights, overnighter. Um, just catching my breath. Um, this is the first time since my illness that I've been able to carry any sort of weight in a rucksack. Quite a heavy ruck at the minute, this is weighing in at about 66 pounds, somewhere around there, because I'm carrying enough water to do both days, which while I'm old and unfit, I do need quite a lot of water. And um, yeah, I've got my old rucksack. I've actually had this since I was around 19 years of age. So hmm, it's probably classed as an antique. <laughs> so I'm gonna get set up now. Uh, I've got the Polish Levu, um, sort of, what do you call it, poncho type of TP tent with me uh, for this outing. So stay with me and let's get set up and have some fun. Okay, so the Levu is all set up. It looks a bit streaky because I've uh, I've resealed it before a few weeks ago, actually now before I brought it up here. So just oh my knees, <laughs> just rocking the basics, um, basic brew kit, you know, cookware kit, snug pack sleeping system. Um, I've got underneath here. I've got a doubled over top, uh, two layers of foam. Uh, I've got extra wool blankets, shouldn't need them. Basic hygiene uh, kit and toilet kit. Rooks in there with food, plenty of water, fire lighting kit, first aid obviously, etc. So yeah, I'm just going to chill for a couple of days and uh, wind back and relax. No real plans. I've got my rifle in the truck, I might do a little bit of target practice, but basically just... Uh, a little bit of unwind time.
happy days. Firewood, a never ending story. I thought I'd show you all this old yew tree quickly. This is actually on my property, so it's within my boundary. It's an ancient yew tree, we believe it's around 500 plus years old, and that's just a conservative estimate. I'll walk up to it so. Hopefully you'll get some idea of the scale of this thing. So, there so I'm just going to walk a ways around it. It's got like a triple crown. And she's probably only goes up to around, I don't know, 25 feet, I'm guessing. But she's probably six to eight feet around, somewhere around there root system's fantastic. Yeah, she's a grand old, uh, a grand old tree, and I feel privileged and honoured that this old uh, piece of English history is actually within my boundary and on the plot that I own at the moment. So yeah, I just thought I'd quickly show you that, that old with the old. Whilst I'm on the subject of yew trees, there's a smaller one here, a couple of hundred years old, maybe 300 years old, this one. And I wanted to show you this, if my camera will allow me to zoom in. The yew tree is actually in fruit at the moment. You can see these luminous berries. They have the, the black pip there. Try and get a good, good close-up of that for some good eye dent for you. Now, as we all know, the yew tree is highly toxic, it's poisonous. There's the leaf structure. Don't get it mixed up with a the spruce. They're very different. And you'll notice the underside of the yew tree has like an OD green colour to it. I this will pick up. Whereas the spruce stays dark all the way through on both sides of the leaves. Now the the actual berry is the only bit that is edible on the yew tree. However, you've got to be very, very careful that that stone, that pip comes out.
course they are high in a poison which is not dissimilar to the base of cyanide. So for me personally, for how much nutrition that offers versus risk re reward and all that, I would personally stay, say, steer well clear. <laughs> That's just my opinion, unless you are in a true emergency. Um, but what a fantastic old tree. I love the yew trees. They, they just feel historic just to look at them. Beautiful old things. But yeah, if you're making spruce tea, be careful on your eye dent and don't go and mix up a yew tree with a spruce and make yourself some poisonous tea. Be careful. Just wandering through a bit of a ridge line embankment on the perimeter of my, my parcel of woodland. And to the left of me, as you can see, it's mainly yew. There's a couple of ash trees. To the right of me, there's a couple of beech, ash, couple of sycamore and some silver birch and whilst they've been out gathering firewood you know it's easy to come across something like this and it's like good hard not rotten cured wood and I'm thinking mm, take that back to base but look at its surroundings it's, it's a canopy of yew tree so this will more than likely be yew wood now whilst it's good for carving, um, you know, making uh, bushcraft types of things, you know, you can use it for effective pot hangers and things like that. I wouldn't recommend burning this on a fire onto which you're going to cook because the wood is highly toxic and you don't want any of that smoke and fumes finding its way into your food. I mean, I dare say we've all burnt you wood just to keep warm stay out to uh, downwind of it so you don't breathe any of the smoke in but personally if you can av avoid using yew tree wood that's my opinion i personally would recommend if you can finding yourself a more safe option just going down to this little we have a little gully or ravine that you can just see down here and that's like the wash off water um pathway so because it's bone dry at the moment, there's no water there. But it's a good way, you can see where the deer have been down. You can see the footprints and, you know, obviously they dig and find as much moisture as they can. I would dig a gypsy well here if I had to, further downstream of the ewes, upstream rather. If I had to, to collect water, because even though it's a dry looking bed, if you dig down deep enough, there will be moisture there. Anyway, I'm heading back to camp now. So we're... Uh, I'll come back to you later on, maybe in the evening. Well, it's been a long and tiring day. I'm absolutely whacked, to be honest. <laughs> so, um, I've enjoyed every last second of it though, I've got to admit. Oh, it's um, proper good medicine, this is good for the soul. So before the light beats me, I'm gonna hit the rack in half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. And uh, I'll see you all in the morning. Have a good night. Good morning campers. Oh crikey me, I always sleep good when I'm outside. I don't know why I just sleep better than I do when I'm at home for some reason. I slept absolutely solid, unusual for me. So uh, it's definitely good in this uh, lavoo because it's dark, that helps me sleep good. I guess I best get me uh, sorry ass up, get a wash, clean my teeth and um, Get a brew on. So hopefully you can hear that, but it's absolutely chucking it down now. <laughs> I'd like to be to retreat into the old Lavoo. So um, mm, let's see how the waterproofing holds up. <laughs>
the rain sounds fa fantastic and uh, a, a real canvas tent, you can't beat it, there's nothing like it. Happy days. Okay, so I'm back outside the Lavu. The rain's eased off a bit, but uh, Yep, as you can probably see by the draw line there, I didn't even button the the flap up, but uh, everything stayed absolutely bone dry. I'm pleased to report. So uh, yeah, very impressed for an old, you know, for an old military style canvas tent made of two ponchos. Yeah, it's impressive, not a leak anywhere. Not in any of the seams, not on the, not, Nothing through the pocket and um, through the arm enclosures. Both sides there. Absolutely bone dry inside. Yeah, well pleased with that. Yeah, so uh, I've got to crack the fire pit back up again now, or try to. <laughs> and uh, start preparing for tea. Well, because it's been chucking it down, everything in my fire pit's wet my stash of um, wood over there is also wet so i've been back out into the woods and i've gathered some very fine um, pencil lead fine sticks that are dry dead standing from underneath the canopy of in this case hawthorn and honeysuckle that type of thing so i've done the snap test if it snaps cleanly and doesn't bend then that shows an indication that it's dry and there's no moisture in there if any of your tinders bend without snapping cleanly discard it and move on and find better better materials to work with because they should just snap cleanly with a nice crisp crack which that one didn't <laughs> like that just a nice clean break so i'm putting that on the raised half of my fire pit and to get things going, ensure I have success, I've got some of my mag dog netting, a couple of pieces of fat wood, and onto that netting, I'm going to shave my fat wood. I'm going to get some my dust type shavings to start with, just for easy ignition. get some of those curls for the girls that golden goodness yeah you can't beat this smell as well whilst I'm sat here doing this I've got the smell of fresh rain in the woods the smell of fat wood you know everything around you has a an essence if, if you like and it, it, it feels fantastic I can't explain what I mean it just feels fresh everything feels fresh and healthy okay so what I'm going to do is, is ignite this fat wood and get those get those starting sticks straight on this little uh, fire pit let's crack on with it as best as we can okay let's see what happens see if we can't rekindle this this damp fire pit hopeful and again like with any fire as soon as the flames reach through your initial fuel that's time then to add more you can see all the smoke from the steam from the water being pushed out there but it looks like we've got success 
we'll go for we'll go to go for cooking for tonight. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to bulk up this little packet of chilli con carne with a little bit of potato and onions there and um, that's going to be this evening's meal, my tea and um, this is day number two um, What did I have this morning for breakfast? Just an oat bar type of thing and for my midday meal, my dinner um, I had pasta and meatballs so it's not like I'm roughing it. <laughs> I'm living quite extravagantly. <laughs> yeah, I do have to watch my portion size. And it's like yesterday I had bacon and eggs, which was pretty much breakfast and dinner. Uh, and I only had a bit of cereal for, for my evening meal for tea as well. So obviously when I have things like you no know, bacon and stuff like that, I have, because of my condition, I have to watch. It's a treat now, you know, I can't have it all the time. And my portion size has got to got to be smaller other than on special occasions like like this weekend <laughs> so i'm not going to bore you with anything else now um i'm going to strike i'm sleeping over tonight and then in the morning i'm going to have a brew i've got a little primer stove in there as well a little gas stove uh, get a brew on get a coffee down me and then i'm going to strike strike camp start packing up ready to go home and then uh, do a bit of admin when I get home and dry the old Laveau out. And um, until the next adventure, I'm calling it. So thank you all very much for your watching. If you're still watching by now, crikey me, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate everybody's comments, subscribe, subscribing. And um, it's just a great community we have. So take care of each other. And until the next time, 
Mad Dog signing off. <coughs> Oh, that's hot. I need a mad dog paw pad under this plate. Oh, mm. oh yeah, that's much needed after collecting lots of firewood again. Mm. Mm. Ha ha. Cod, aren't you? Chilly with everything, baby. <laughs> Why not? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. In closing, I just wanted to add a massive thank you to everybody that's. Um, still supporting me and people are still <clears throat> commenting on my health and everything you know it's it's really nice to feel part of our community so um i can't thank you all enough i appreciate it from the bottom of my heart i really do and uh, i'm going to get my uh, tea down me now whilst it's still hot mm -mm. and until next time my dog signing off again yeah <laughs>